Are we live? Great. Good to not see you guys, but good to have you here. Um, this is uh, our little uh, stream concert. It's called Music on Demand, and we've been looking extremely much forward to this. Um, it is the first concert of the series of four season, our little concert series here in Copenhagen. And um, of course, um, it's, uh, it's quite uh, different than we anticipated because um, actually it was going to be Paul Lewis uh, who was uh, going to be here. Um, and uh, okay, we have some echo here. Can we turn that one off? Vi har en højtaler, der står og laver larm. Det er for de mange computer. Okay, that, that's funny. Okay, so... <laughs> Sorry, a little bit of start issues here. But it should have been Paul Lewis uh, playing uh, here at the Series of Four concert. He couldn't be here, unfortunately. So um, you're gonna live uh, by just us having a good uh, evening here tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Anyways, um, and of course, you got to pick the music for tonight. Um, and um, I just want to say that we are not going to play the pieces with, uh, with the highest votes, uh, like uh, chronologically, like that. We are going to spread them out a little bit uh, in four little sets. Um, so, that brings me to um, the first piece that we are going to play for you, which is actually a fantastic uh, old Baroque piece by uh, Henry Purcell. And it is his, his uh, Chacon in G minor. So, Casper, are you ready?
Yeah. yeah, let me see here, 179 votes, you guys were really looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, and there's a good reason for that, because it's actually the first time that we are playing this piece of music. It's, it's in three movements, uh, well, well, it is a set, so uh, it's, it's three little uh, tunes and uh, arranged by Frederick here. Um, the first one is called Mabel Kelly, the second one is called Plankstie Kelly. And the last one is called Carolyn Squirrel with the Land Lady. <laughs> I think we should also uh, remember to thank you all for voting and participating. We really appreciate that. It's been so much fun following the process and seeing uh, which one took the lead. And uh, we, some of them we thought might uh, end up and, and win, but some were uh, like, uh, what, what do you call them, dark horses, something like that, <laughs> that we didn't expect. Um, and we also, I think we should also um, say that uh, you should all, if you want to, uh, think of something that, um, if you want to ask us something, you can write it in the chat. Uh, or And in the end, we're also going to have a set where uh, you can wish for pieces that we haven't played. Because obviously we don't have time for, to play all of them. Unfortunately, I, maybe this should be a recurrent event, maybe an annual one. Yeah. And, and fun. also in general, if you have some questions that we could answer for you or uh, something like that or and, and the last thing is if you haven't already opened up a beer oh, very important. then uh, I think you should and have a toast with us <laughs> cheers <sighs> should have been a Guinness no? yep should nice. have been a Guinness <laughs> and I can just add that these three melodies are composed by a guy called um, I'm gonna not pronounce his name right, but my attempt would be Torlach O'Carolan. Yeah. And uh, he was uh, an Irish harp player uh, born in 1670 uh, and wrote some really, really amazing melodies actually. And here we have three of them. All right, let's do it. Welcome.
Yeah. And Cheers. Frederick's creation, right? Mm. Yeah. Cheers. Very good job, by the way. Very good. Not bad, not bad. And right after St. Patrick's Day, very suitable. So, we have um, a lot of things in store for you, except music. Um, <laughs> a few things, at least. A couple of commercials, a little bit of entertainment, and a little quiz. Um, so, there's going to be a quiz, there's going to be three questions, and we will ask the questions during the show to keep you all watching to the end. But you can only write the answers um, after the last question. It's also hard to write the uh, answer before the last if, question. If you can write them right away, you will definitely win. <laughs> yeah, then you'll win. <laughs> so, but um, before we play the next uh, piece of music, uh, I will ask that very first question. Which is um, a question about a Danish island that is famous for its folk music tradition. Um, and the tune that we're about to play comes from this island. So that is the question. What is the name of this Danish island that the next tune that we are about to play is coming from? And this tune is a tune that won a staggering 101 votes in the international music election for this streaming concert. It comes here and see if you can figure out that island. Obviously, 
Because what could it be? None other than the brand new Prison 3 album. Could we get an applause? <laughs> <laughs> With the delay. <laughs> yeah. I think, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so this is our brand new album, just came out, featuring works by Bach, Bach Bartok and uh, the grand old Beethoven. And it is the third in a series of five albums that we're going to release in this Prism series. And if you answer all three questions correctly, you get a chance at winning this fabulous album. Uh, we'll send it to you. And we might even sign it. Yes. We might even sign it. All right. Um, and that also brings us to the next uh, uh, point on the menu, because the, this is one of the uh, classical pieces that actually did, I think this one did no, it. No. Uh, did it win? The, the, no. No, it did no, not. No. But it did not win, but it was second of was the classical pieces. Yeah. Yes. And that's very very lucky because it's the last piece. On this new Prism 3 album, did I mention the newly released Prism 3 album? <laughs> um, and and it's, so it's the last movement of the Beethoven Opus 131 Quartet. Uh, the, the one of the uh, greatest and craziest quartets. And uh, this movement comes out of a, a, a series of, of, of movements, but it feels like one big movement. There are no pauses in between the different movements, and you and you just keep on playing, and the mood con continuously changes. And uh, this movement comes after a very, very uh, well. First, a very, very fast presto, and then a completely slow, beautiful, um, almost painful slow movement, and then it turns into this quite bombastic last movement. And uh, we are going to perform that right after this.
you remember when we played this the first time, probably. Yeah, yeah, yes, this particular arrangement I do. Yeah. Uh, we did. We played it at a Beethoven cycle that we did in the Lincoln Center because I want to hit some very nice Beethoven quotes inside of this arrangement. Yeah. That's that's as far as my memory goes. That could also have been one of the questions in the quiz. Uh, and talking about the quiz, we have another question. Because um, actually, uh, the next question is, when did Beethoven complete his Opus 1, 3, 1? This, uh, this last movement we just played is from that piece. When, what year did you complete that? That's the second question. So write down, not in the chat now, save it for the last question, but uh, now, uh, now you know the second question. All right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, we need some smoke and some red light. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, let's go. Since we can't see you in person, this is a really wonderful alternative. So thanks so much for supporting and being here. And and now we're gonna play another one that we don't don't get to play that often. Are we? Right? Yeah, we're gonna play the uh, part three. Part three. Do you want to talk about that one? Yeah, sure. So um, this is from the same island that we talked about in the beginning, uh, and that you have to write an answer for. This is. Um, the third bridal piece from the southern, southern village, uh, the village is called Sødderhov, 
And um, we know of these three bridal pieces from the island, uh, dating many hundred years back. And um, this third uh, uh, bridal piece is actually arranged by, a good, arranged by a good friend of ours called Nikolai Busk. Maybe you're watching Nikolai. Uh, anyways, it's always a pleasure playing your arrangement. Uh, it's from the Woodworks album. And uh, yeah. Can we just tune quickly? Let's tune.
Thank you, Nicolai. Great. Yeah, actually, I forgot to mention. Um, so this concert series is actually supported by a lot of uh, foundations. Um, but as we don't have any ticket sales tonight, um, we would be happy if you would consider a small donation. Um, and uh, you can donate on either paypal.me slash Danish Street, uh, Danish Quartet, paypal.me slash Danish Quartet, or uh, for Danska, for the Danish people, you can also mobile pay on the number 48 11 13. 48 11 13. Mobile pay. Yeah, so thank you for that. Um, it's time for heading. It's time for heading. Yes, Ooh. that is correct. Is this another world premiere? Yes. Or which heading is it? It is absolutely a new world premiere. All right. Yeah. And Rone, what is a heading actually? <laughs> yeah, um, it's a dance that you would like to demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. yeah. Ping pong. <laughs> no. Well. <laughs> well, well, well. Well, can you explain what it is that I don't want to demonstrate? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Maybe you can further. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I think you should. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. I'll try to explain briefly. Um, um, a halling is a Norwegian uh, dance that is. Um, uh, it's actually a solo dance. Uh, usually, in the tradition, you have a lot of couple dances, but this is a solo dance, and it's. It's actually a, a dance where the, 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 the men can show off uh, and try to, you know, get some women. Um, and uh, it's the, the, the dance is basically that they show all these tricks, uh, jumping up and down. It's, it's incredibly uh, virtuosic, actually. And um, uh, it all builds up and um, in the end, usually, there would be a girl standing with a pole like this and with a hat on the end of the pole and she will um, raise it or lower it uh, according to her own preference, basically. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and she also have, have to judge how, how good the dancer is. And, um, and if it's really good, then it's like up here. And, um, and uh, then the sort of climax of the dance is that he will uh, make this sort of a, a flip kick uh, <laughs> and, and kick off the hat off the pole. And um, uh, I guess the idea is then that he has somehow won the girl or something like that. Uh, but it's incredibly virtuosic to see and if I mean now you're already on YouTube you can go after and check out uh, just hulling uh, type it in and, and check out the dancers because they're amazing to look at really uh, so this is a traditional um, little piece and uh, it's a new arrangement world premiere today you can maybe hulling, yeah. hulling uh, after uh, halt the Gutten. Uh, I'm not sure he, who he was, but that's what it's called anyway. Yeah. You can actually you can actually Google Halling and then Esbjørn's name, then you will find the, the best videos with this dance. <laughs> ah, this is my second career. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go. You have your iPad on my iPad. Yeah, so thanks. So, <laughs> just need to fix. Mm -hmm. now, uh, if you only use cheap music, this wouldn't be fun. I mean, so. So, uh, as you can see, we've we brought a ton of music. This is all that you guys had to choose between. And uh, uh, during these days, we've been teasing Ashburn quite a lot because he, he's the only one who. Uh, it doesn't have an, uh, something that, uh, uh, some kind of electronic, uh, electronic device that he can play the music from. 
and, but now it turns out that the iPads are messing up, so... Uh, yeah, analog always wins. Analog always wins. <laughs> well, except for all the times when it doesn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's good. Right. Here goes. <laughs> Are you growing tired of playing string quartet? Try Last Leaf sheet music. Last Leaf's handcrafted arrangements and compositions give you instant relief and helps regain your passion for string quartet playing. Some people have had changes in behavior and mood while playing Last Leaf. If you notice agitation or changes in behavior, thinking or mood that are not typical for you, stop playing Last Leaf and call your teacher right away. Talk to your teacher about any health problems which can get worse while playing Last Leaf. If you notice tendonitis, swelling feet, or an urge to have a zip of that lukewarm beer in your window frame, 
Stop playing Last Leaf and see your teacher right away. Tell your teacher what other music you are playing at the moment, as it may have a damaging effect on your groove. The most common side effect is a pulsating feeling in the entire body. Quartets also reported trouble sleeping and unusual or strange dreams. Until you know how Last Leaf may affect you, use caution when operating wooden tools. Last Leaf should not be combined with any other genre crossing arrangements. Last Leaf sheet music helped us through our Beethoven fatigue. Thank you, Last Leaf sheet music. Talk to your teacher to find out if Last Leaf is right for you. And you can buy this wonderful music, Last Leaf, on DanishPortageShop.com. So if you want to play some uh, folk music, it's all there. You can buy it as PDFs or this print copy as I'm sitting with in my hand here. Um, that's all for the commercials. Let's move on to the next round of music. And uh, I think we are going to play uh, for you the piece, uh, the classical music piece that got the most votes. Let me just check how many votes it actually got. Um, you guys voted it in on the fourth place. <laughs> fourth place. Uh, it's the Debussy um, Quartet, uh, third movement, and you guys uh, gave it 116 votes. And it's a good choice. It's wonderful music. So um, yeah, let's move on to a third round here and play some Debussy for you guys. Do you want to mention that we apparently had a copyright? Uh, fall out from, from the Facebook stream uh, in the moment that we played the Beethoven piece, uh, which should be fair game to actually perform Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's yeah, because we perform exactly the way that we do on our own recording. It's just like a blueprint apparently. So the algorithm went bananas <laughs> in that moment. Yeah. I think we're back on Facebook again, uh, yeah. so everybody can hopefully enjoy this Debussy piece that I hope will not be locked down by copyright. <laughs> like <this. laughs> So Kasper, play the round three.
Thank you for choosing that. It's really lovely to be able to play that Some again. Some of the best French music I've ever written, in my opinion. Wow, so nice. Yeah. And I think maybe this would be a good time to just take a few questions. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, so there's been a question, and this one is from Drew Kerwick. Uh, and um, Drew asks, uh, what prompted us to get into Irish music? And uh, I think maybe you should talk about that, Frederick. Or maybe only somebody who wants to? Yeah, well, I mean, we, we did play a, an arrangement of three Irish tunes here earlier. And um, uh, I mean, f f for me, I, I've always listened to Irish music um, from I was a very little uh, child. And um, uh, so that that tonality and sound has always been lingering in, my, in the back of my, my mind. Um, so it, for me, it was a natural place to uh, to look for inspiration. And uh, but I think it's the first time we actually arranged something from Ireland. But uh, 
I, you know, the music over there is so beautiful and, and uh, amazing. And I, actually, there are some similarities to some of the Nordic dances as well. So I, I, I hope and think that there will be more arrangements from, from uh, Ireland and, and Great Britain. There's also uh, somebody, I, uh, so we have some questions written down here from Marlene. I, I can't really read the name, Marlene. So <laughs> it might be something, somebody called uh, Ik or Tik. Tik? E-K. 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 Something like that. Uh, who asks, will there be sheet music someday? And uh, I think we can, uh, we don't know. But uh, if you uh, keep a look, if you keep a look out on our Facebook site, we uh, from time to time we do release sheet music for some of our arrangements. Uh, we also have a uh, site where you can buy the sheet music that we have. Ole? Yeah, it's called yeah. DanishQuartetShop.com. And Danish. actually, yeah, Danish music. No, nee, DanishQuartetShop.com. Sorry. Um, and it's not only last leaf we have there, it's, it's also a few other things. So we might put it out one day, um, also the Irish set. Um, so stay tuned on our Facebook and uh, we'll let you know. Yeah. Are there any other questions that we should answer? Yes, there is this, uh, Shaneta wants to know what are each of your favorite pieces of music to play? Oi. Okay, so we'll just repeat that. It's Shanet who asks what are uh, what, uh, our favorite pieces of music are individually, I guess. To right? play. To play. Not to listen to. <laughs> Maybe it's connected. <laughs> okay. Well, that's actually, actually I, I, I can start. I think uh, the Debussy Quartet is uh, one of my favorites, at least. To play for a string quartet. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's a very tricky question. I think there's so many things. It kind of depends on what mood you're in. For me personally, it, it changes. Um, I. I you guys probably know already, but I, I think I gotta go with uh, some kind of uh, late Beethoven because I think that's the for me that 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 uh, it just it 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 has so many different emotions. It for me it, it houses the whole of the human um, spectre of emotion. Um, so however I feel on a certain day, I can always. Uh, mirror myself in that music or see comfort in that music because it's always there. Um, on the other hand, it's also some of the music that's hardest to play, so I don't know if I enjoy that part of it so much. But uh, but it's definitely some of the music that I enjoy listening to. I, I think actually to me sometimes we do an encore where we do a little Danish song that sometimes is the same song that I'm singing to my daughter when I'm desperately trying to make her sleep. Um, and I think that is actually what I enjoy the most, to so you can be in a huge stage with your best friends and you just did all this Beethoven stuff, but then you're able to just play a tiny little song that you sung when you were a kid. And I think everything comes uh, sort of sort of a circle style around in a very nice way that I actually enjoy that even more than all this masterpieces. You're a simple person. Yes, I'm just a simple farmer. <laughs> a simple ton, my <laughs> one might say. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, I, I don't know, I, I think it changes too. I, I, um, um, when, you, when you play, when you study music, uh, you get a very special insight to the music and that gives another dimension. So uh, whatever you're playing at the moment, you, you'll probably like a little bit more or hate a little bit more um, but um, I remember one time uh, when we went to Japan and um, well let's be honest we had a quite rough night out <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, it ended up very ugly with karaoke and stuff we, and, met, uh, we met somebody called Svensson I remember <laughs> yeah, we met Svensson and a lot of strange guys out there and and it, yeah, it took off. And the day after we had a concert, and um, and uh, you know we we were all a little bit jet lagged, let's put it that way, uh, <laughs> for uh, um, the rehearsal. And um, uh, instead of actually playing the repertoire that we uh, should play in the concert, we we had this um, like one of these big books of, of, uh, of um, 
Mozart quartets, and we just found one uh, and played one, side weeded one actually, just to sort of feel the hole and and that feeling was so nice actually to just without any pressure, without any you know, uh, no one listening critically, but just um, enjoying this uh, actually fresh music that is still almost 300 years old. Right. Uh, that was a very, very nice feeling. So that could definitely go on my favorite list. Let's play some music. Good questions. So the next we're going to play for you is uh, also an old um, arrangement. Um, and again, we're back on the island uh, in Denmark, and I won't say the name. Um, remember that um, after we ask the third quiz question, you can write a message with all three correct answers. Um, and then we will, what's that called, Tsaik Love? Uh, pull. <laughs> what's that called? Uh, we'll do like a draw. We'll yeah, draw, draw, draw a winner. winner. We'll draw, draw a winner. winner. Yeah. Who gets the person three seat? All right. Pull the winner. So this is the Honest Bridal Couple and um, first. first a uh, bridal piece from the fainer. Mm -hmm. yes.
reveal the island before? I think uh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so maybe you know the answer to the first question on the quiz. Doesn't matter. Here is the last question. So, um, and now be ready to type because um, now is the time. Uh, here goes. Um, one of their most popular songs has the same chord progression as Shine You No More, the next piece that we're going to play, which is actually a chord progression, not by them, but by a English composer called John Dowland, old Renaissance composer. Um, and um, I don't know if you're seeing where I'm getting. No, probably not. So you have to write the name of the French electronica duo that just broke up after 28 years. So the name of that duo, collect all three correct answers and you'll be in the competition for Prism 3. And maybe should we say that this is the last official piece of the concert, so yep. if you have any other wishes that you might want us to play, just write it in the chat and we will do our very best to play them. Yeah. And questions as well, we might take a few, I think we should take a few questions afterwards mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Right. And now. And also, thank you again for watching. And yeah. and uh, if, if anybody's still watching, <laughs> <laughs> it might just be us. Long but evening. But that's okay too. We're having a good time. Thank you, Mom, for still being here. Yes, exactly. Yes. Our loyal supporter. <laughs> you can always count on her. That's absolutely great. All right. Here is Shiny Noble. Right. <laughs>
Yeah. So with yeah. that, that uh, kind of concludes the the programmed uh, part part of this evening. Yeah. Uh, Melina, any questions that you think we should answer? Yes. Um, which uh, Joanne wants to know which one of you is the best football player? <laughs> 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 so the question is, which of us is the best football player? I think we assume it's uh, European soccer that we're talking about here and not American football, which we are pretty bad at universally, I guess. I don't know. We had some um, accidents, actually. I, 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 oh yeah, there are many good stories with that. I destroyed my knee playing football. You destroyed your arm once. Yeah. So uh, there's actually just two football players left. <laughs> I think uh, uh, I think actually we could maybe just briefly t- uh, tell that story because we were at a, a, a monastery in Poland and uh, we were playing at a festival and this was actually a monastery where it, it, it had monks that were that lived there and um, and they were extremely kind and uh, we uh, we talked to them and quickly became friends with them and then they actually asked us uh, asked us out to play a soccer game. And uh, we obviously agreed. And uh, but 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 what happened was that uh, I uh, accidentally tripped over a monk. <laughs> and then we were playing the monks, and I fell over one of them. And uh, and I landed on my arm, and I broke my arm, and had to go to a hospital uh, in Poland. And then I had to obviously cancel everything. And this was also just before we had a uh, big competition in Europe. And uh, and uh, it was uh, it was it was it wasn't a lot of fun. And it, luckily, it wasn't a, a, a big thing. I I was I was playing again after about a month, I think. Um, and uh, uh, the monk felt bad, obviously. Uh, but <laughs> but, I, I, but it's a it's a it's a story now. It's a good I, story. I guess you can answer it by saying that we have quite different roles when we play soccer. We don't play a lot of soccer. Rune is sort of a very smart uh, attacker, attacking type. He's, he's, <laughs> he's lurking fast. in front of the goal, he's really making fast. a lot of goals, Frederick. He's, he's plowing around in the defense, <laughs> hitting monks. I'm in the midfield and I, I don't know what, what your role would be. But like in I, I, I've, I've, I've never punch. tried football. <laughs> what? Well, there no. you go. <laughs> I, I have tried. I actually, I, I did play football, like organized football. When I was a kid, that's kind of unbelievable, right? <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Jennifer asked who do Rune, how do Rune and uh, Frederik decide who plays first in Vito? Flip coins? <laughs> you can ask that, like, I'm just checking you. Uh, well, um, when we started playing together, it was. Yeah, only for fun, we we got together and just went to the library and got out all the music that we could find for string quartet, and we just chewed our way through all of it. And um, back then, we would always take turns because that was the most fun. Um, both parts are both challenging in different ways, but they're also fun in different ways. So uh, that's the way we started doing it, and and we just kept on doing that, and it's it's always felt good. Um, I think it used to be that Rune did more classical stuff and I did more romantic stuff and maybe to some degree it's still a little bit like that but not as much anymore. Now it's it's more something like um, with the Beethoven for example we, we aim to have the same amount of Beethoven and um, with Shostakovich the same, with Bartzak the same. Um, it's just really great to be able to share that uh, workload of being first violin but it's also, uh, I feel strongly that it's something that makes us a better quartet because you pick up stuff when you're playing first violin that you can use when you're playing second violin. And it also works the other way around. Um, and I can honestly say I enjoy both both roles tremendously. They're very, very different roles, uh, but it's just great to be able to do both. I agree. Great. <laughs> Sorry, uh, my internet was uh, breaking down here. I'm just trying to look for some requests here. That's yeah. a lot, I have one more request. You have a lot of them. That's yeah, good. Yeah, is asking who is your favorite composer you work you have worked with. Oh, the favorite composer that we have worked with. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's a living composer or. Uh, a, 
I think kind of hard there. to work with that <laughs> <company. laughs> the music of yeah. <laughs> for me I mean it's it's so unfair to to the ones that you don't mention then but 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 uh, I mean a, a, a big thing for us was to work with Thomas Addis I find uh, we played his um, uh, Arcadiana uh, string quartet number one and um, we also had the great privilege of playing his piano quintet with him uh, which was an amazing experience so um, yeah. that, that, that was a good thing I think are you absolutely he was he was fantastic but I mean it's always it's always a pleasure working with living composers because right. it's a completely different way of working uh, and playing music uh, when you're playing music that somebody wrote and, and then passed away then you gotta interpret it but with the living composers you gotta interpret it but then you also get the chance to actually work with them and uh, and actually one of the fun things is that I think that uh, sometimes you play something in a way that they were not expecting they were actually maybe looking for something else but then it maybe felt good to them so they ended up agreeing with the interpretation I think we can learn a lot from that because we're kind of always scared of not like this is a we, in, in classical music we have the you know dots and, and um, uh, the dynamics and all this stuff in the music and we're always so scared not to play the right thing but I think it's Everything is fluid, basically. Should we have uh, some music? Yeah. Yes, there's been a lot of requests. Thank you for, for those. Um, a lot of people want to hear the drawer. I think we can well, maybe play that in a couple of uh, tunes. Uh, okay. Also, there was a request for um, oh. uh, five sheep and four goats. I think we should play that. Yeah. Uh, do you want to play that? But, but maybe then we should play uh, that one and then boom, and then done. Have we have a done? quiz. Oh yeah, we have a quiz as well. Oh, yeah. We need to yeah, yeah, but oh, first, we? first we play. We just play one more uh, thing. And so then we do the quiz results, and then we do the drum right now. So we do the sheep. Yeah. Good. And who requested that? Do we wanna? Uh, yeah, now I lost it. Uh, where were you? Oh my god, this is you 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 guys are crazy, you have so many comments, it's fantastic, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's really wonderful that you guys are tuning in. Yeah. It's really appreciated. But the request was for a tune called Five Sheep for Goats. Yes. Right? Yep. So fantastic title and here it goes. <laughs>
So here is a request from the chat and it's the drummer. That's gonna be our last piece for tonight. Thank you guys. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks See for you watching. out there soon. Det er skole, så. Jo, for sæt.